in internet land. This is the World Ninja, John Kingsley. Uh, I am coming to you from Iquitos, Peru. We are here in the clinic of Dr. Miriam Hacker, uh, who we're intervie interviewing tonight about some issues that some of you folks might uh, find interesting back home. Um, my wife and I have been down here now for uh, myself for three weeks, and uh, Carolyn has been down for uh, two weeks, and we have uh, learned a lot of good things from uh, Dr. Miriam Hacker while we're here. So it is our pleasure to introduce you to Akitos' own Dr. Miriam Hacker. Uh, and uh, what do you do here at the clinic, Dr. Hacker? I'm here since nine years. I'm treating all possible sicknesses from uh, flu to cancer, whichever type of cancer. And I'm treating it only with natural medicine or alternative uh, medicine. Okay. Uh, in doing so, do you use some of the local plants and, and herbs uh, in your practice in addition to doing the Eastern medicine? Not only the herbs. The herbs is only a part of my treatment. I, knew, uh, I need a racist, no written, no nationalist. I'm using everything that is giving me good results. For example, the, uh, the air acupuncture or acupuncture at all, it, it is the, uh, since 5,000 years discovered by Chinese, and to nowadays it is widely used, worldwide used, use it. Then the, the biomagnetic resonance and um, body balancing system, which is from Medline, it works with, uh, with um, uh, magnetic energy and with um, delta and theta waves, brain waves. And to this, of course, is coming the uh, medicinal plants of Amazon. Okay. Uh, why do you think that in your experience as a doctor with Eastern medicine as well as the herbology of the Amazon, uh, what do you think that the uses of Amazonian plants and elements, why do you think they don't use them more? Yeah, uh, Iquitos was for a few years ago the most isolated city in the Guinness Book of Records. Now since three, four years we got the only road which is uh, connecting us to the neighboring city of Nauta and it was the, the first place in Guinness Book of Records. Uh, Amazonia, or Amazon, uh, or Amazonian rainforest, uh, to be exact, was for so many thousand of years, it was very isolated. Even to nowadays, the river and the climate, or the, the jungle of Amazon is making the, uh, the shadows, the traveling shadows, it is making, uh, it is the, uh, to be honest, this the, the strongest power of the nature which is uh, which is ruling here. Additionally, because that's isolation, all those medicinal plants were not able to be discovered or even exported to, um, to the other countries so this other patient could be also introduced to them and try out. The, the isolation was the, the, the biggest fault. Obviously, it was uh, decently hard to get here, but at least they've got air uh, flights coming in now from uh, Copa Airlines, uh, which is how Carolyn and I got down. Uh, and so things are, uh, apparently are picking up a bit. Tourism in Peru went up 30% last year, and it did so the yes. year before also. Yes. Um, so it seems that people are coming down more, so maybe Iquitos might have a chance to get some of those treatments out there now. I hope so, because uh, we find a way here to destroy the rainforest. I mean, uh, we the first world country, and now there, there is so little left over of it, now we develop tourism. The tourism is only a drop of hot stone, or the hot rock. Uh, it would help a bit uh, uh, to make the world aware of the problem which we have here with deforestation, but it should have come already 20 years ago. Absolutely. And the problem that they're having here is one that's... Uh it's, it's kind of continent-wide. If you guys look on the news, you can find reports about Brazil having problems also around the Zingu River uh, with deforestation and, and, uh, a fr and a dam that they're building that's killing a lot of the river area. And the people that live there, of course, are affected by such things. Um, so now that things are a little more connected and tourism might be helping out with that, what do you think the best way to get those methods into common practice in the med medicinal field would be? I would wish that I could give you a positive answer, but we can't. Uh, I can't do that. Uh, the pharma industry worldwide 
is so or so strong or so almighty, they would never uh, permit that uh, medicinal plants get out because uh, they are fearing of for their business. Obviously, the yes. almighty dollar once yes, again. Yes, yes, yes. Um, well, do you think that people are being harmed by that very idea? I mean, the, the pharmaceutical companies are in there uh, fighting for the top dollar, of course. Do you think that Western and Eastern medicine should be able to work together on solutions and that together doctors themselves might be able to change the tide? Uh, the doctors don't have much to say because they depend all from the pharma industry themselves, hospitals as well, as well the insurances. And so if, if one uh, multinational or worldwide big, uh, big um, industry, what we call the pharmaceutical industry, they have all the, the threats in the hand. Mm. And so long as they don't uh, uh, start to think more humane and more of the world, uh, humanity, uh, so dedicate themselves more for the humans and, not, uh, and less for the business, so long we would, have, uh, we would see very lit little results. So we may come to several solutions, but we'll always have the same problem. We would always uh, have a, a brick wall in front of us, or David and Goliath uh, uh, yes, uh, situation. Yes. Uh, have you found that overall the doctors that you've met in, in both training and also just traveling around as much as you have, that she, and ladies and gentlemen, she's been to 31 different countries uh, doing this work. Five, co five continents. Uh, yeah, so you know she's definitely uh, had her fair share of, of businesses like these in multiple situations. Uh, the story of how she ended up in Iquitos, Peru is a golden one in and of itself. But have you found that the doctors that you've met through uh, traveling around so much, that they would like to do that, both on western side and eastern side, but it is actually the pharmaceutical companies that yes. just uh, hold them? We have to start from the beginning. <coughs> uh, the, the alternative medicine, as said, is 5,000 years old. The modern medicine or scientific medicine developed from the alternative medicine. As uh, With other words, the alternative medicine is the matter of uh, the modern medicine. The alternative medicine goal was to cure the complete patient, not only parts of the patient. The modern medicine is uh, more orientated on, uh, on uh, treating symptoms as to treat the cause. Mm. Exactly, a whole body treatment as opposed yes. to treating an individual organ. Yes. Which if you think about it guys back home, uh, and this is something that my wife and I have had to deal with personally over and over. If you have a problem with, uh, say, multiple sclerosis or fibromyalgia or lupus or any of those diseases that really affect the whole body, Western medicine kind of starts at a bad place because they're treating system by system on a disease that jumps all over the body. So Eastern medicine in many ways finds that they have a lot better luck in treating situations like Parkinson's and multiple sclerosis. Uh, they find a lot better results in that. So it's one of those things that we'd really like to see the doctors be able to work together, but things like the pharmaceutical industry, insurance companies, whoever's in control of where the dollar goes, yes, seems yes. to put a strangle on it. Yes, yes, but that is more important than the dollar or the human lives. Exactly, exactly. Do a room with some lace and paper flowers